Now to West Africa, where Ghanaian banker Thelma Tago quit her corporate job in one of Africa's premier banks to launch an after-school center in Accra, where children can learn coding and robotics while having fun. Our technology correspondent Paul Ndiho spoke to Tago. Hello, Paul. Hello, Esther. The Learn and Play Center fosters critical thinking, problem solving, and creative of young children. It also encourages them to become future innovators by providing a holistic learning experience, building a vibrant community, and shaping their future through technology. Welcome to Africa 54. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. When I was doing my research about uh, some of the work that uh, you do and uh, talking to some people who know you, they told me you are doing some amazing stuff with kids. You are trying to change uh, uh, a community. You are trying to empower young people. What is it uh, that uh, you do? I was a banker for many years. And um, whilst I was a banker, I realized when we have meetings with uh, the international community that um, it seems like we tend to freeze or we are not able to express ourselves as eloquently. So when I decided to leave the bank and set up my own business, I sort of wanted to find out where I can actually contribute more because of my experience and what I want to do in life. I started off with my own child. I have um, a toddler. And what I realized was Africa can actually grow organically if we begin to change their mindsets. We have been sort of ingrained in ourselves, the culture of respect of an adult. In Africa, we show respect by not being too proactive, too assertive. And because of that cultural nuance, it stops us from actually being ourselves in such important meetings when we meet the Western community. So I decided to set up this place. It's supposed to be an after-school place initially, just for the kids to come, so that they can somehow have a way of impacting them, to be able to see the world a little more differently, a little more holistically. But then when I started, and I started the classes, we started with STEM programs, I realized the kids were beginning to become more of themselves. So then I introduced a little more. So we went into toddler coding and robotics, and it was like a new day for them. It was so amazing to see how their eyes sparkled, and by the third, fourth classes, they were like a different person. So then we invested more in that area. I like the fact that uh, you are introducing these uh, skills uh, to young people. When we come out here, uh, we find ourselves in situations where we can't compete, and yet uh, we have. Uh, sometimes you have the education but you cannot uh, compete uh, with the rest uh, of your colleagues and uh, you cannot express yourself. To your point, I think uh, that's a great uh, thing that uh, you are trying to do. Uh, how has the response been like? It's been amazing. So the, thing, the immediate thing the parents tend to see with their kids is that their confidence level just shoots up. So I recall a parents come to me, I think on the, the third class um, of her child, she had, come to, she had come to us and complained that her child is very quiet in class. She doesn't like responding when they ask, when they ask questions in class. And she's naturally too, I don't want to use the word timid, but really just reserved. By the third class four, this young girl would start in front of the class and she wants to lead the class. And so her mom came and said, what are we doing? Because her teachers from school are asking, my child has completely changed. What is going on? And she hasn't done anything differently. She's just excited about robotics. She's excited about everything that she's able to do in class. Because we make them disassemble the robots themselves, then they program them and they, re they reassemble them. And when they see the robots acting, it's as if something in them clicks. And so they themselves now feel comfortable sharing and getting excited with others. We invested a lot in the tools. So every child has access to a robot a tablet and what to use. So it's not where you go to the school um, and kids are sharing. So the quieter kids don't have access to these things. In our classes, every child has access to a tool. So everybody is doing it. So that, I think, is part of the reason why they seem to grow up more quickly in terms of confidence and self-reliance. Earlier, you talked about uh, how uh, we are in uh, a, new, uh, a new era of uh, AI, uh, chat GPT, uh, anything robotics, uh, uh, machine learning. Uh, how big of uh, an impact do you think you are having on these kids and uh, how important are these skills to the young people? 
I see the transformation in them when they realize that they have control. After making the coding commands, when the robots actually are responding to what they have coded, that breaks something in them. So immediately, as a teacher, as a coach, I see the change. I see the, the way they become more vocal and more active. The more robotics classes they go to, it makes them stronger and more vocal. So they're able to speak up. And that's what the African kid needs. They should be able to use their voice and they should be able to, be able, they should be able to communicate freely no matter where they are. I think we're having internet issues on that note. So I thank you so much for your time. I'm grateful. Salma Tego is the founder and CEO of the Children's Learn and Play Center in Accra, Ghana. That's today's Tech Report. Back to you, Esther. Thanks, Paul. Be sure to join Paul Ndiho's Technology Reports every Wednesday on Africa 54. And that's our show for today. Be sure to watch Africa 54 on our website at voaafrica.com. From all of us here in Washington, thanks for watching. <laughs>